Robert again from Caesar Shop. I am here on Eva Show uh, on the Shield boot. With me is Justin. He is uh, the most important guy you want to know if you want to buy, uh, shoot at, with Shield. So uh, I will. We would like to explain to you the packaging of the site and uh, what's inside. How does it function? Why doesn't it has any bottoms and anything else. So, could you explain us what do you have in your hand and what is the model call, called, yeah, my so favorite one? Thanks, Robbie. So this is the RMS-X. This is our product aimed specifically at IPSC, IDPA, USPSA, competitive shooting. So it's very different to our EDC and law enforcement line of products. This product is something that we derived aimed specifically at the competition market. So, in the packaging that you will get from us, the retail packaging, you may be able to see, but there are many items in the box that we have. Uh, the easiest way is to look through the packaging and essentially tell you which element each item does. So, first and foremost, you have the warranty card and any information you need in different languages. You also have some stickers. So, a lot of people look at the stickers and think, yeah, this is something I can put on my equipment, on my range bag, or anything like that. This is actually a sticker that at 20 yards will enable you to look at the MOA and you will be able to zero the product. So this is essentially a sticker that we use for zeroing. Otherwise, in, in included in the package, you also have these. So this is an item that, again, people often make the mistake of thinking this is just a sticker. You'll see these on bags, clothes, magazines, everywhere. What this actually is, is a very important piece of the packaging. Thank you. So inside, what you will normally see is we include a CR2032 battery, which is the battery that the red dot takes. There are, most of our models will take this battery except for the AMS line. What you'll actually find is that the sticker itself is actually a spacer. So what happened is manufacturers decided to change the technical specifications of the CR2032 battery. What we found is that that battery then didn't fill the gap as we would hope so we provide in every packaging the battery stickers. They're actually stickers for the battery and act as spacers. They're not there for your kit or for anything else. They actually serve a purpose in the packaging. So the battery sticker is very important. If you buy an aftermarket battery or some different brand than we supply in the retail packaging, this could be useful to make sure the connections are perfect and the battery is connected properly. How long does battery last in, in, a, in a site like that? So, great question. So, ordinarily speaking, people assume that the battery lasts for one month, two months, six. We found that the battery, when stored inside the optic with the cover used, most people have it in a range bag or a safe, we're getting two years plus out of a singular 2032 battery. As always, as we do with our kit, we check everything, we clean our products, the red dot should be considered the same way. If you change your springs, you change your extractor, you maintain your firearm and you check the components. The red dot is no similar. So every year when you strip your guns, minimum, why not replace the battery? It's a one euro part that can either make or break your match. For the sake of a simple replacement battery, when you do your maintenance, it makes sense. One of the things Robbie always asks me about is the correct way to mount the battery. So. Just jumping back, in the retail packaging we provide the cover which will keep the battery powered down to virtually zero when it's in the cover. So when it's in the cover, it shuts down the, the red dot? It's always on. It's so what the cover does is it reduces the sensor down to virtually zero. But what will happen is the minute you take the cover off, it will already be on. It isn't a shake awake. It doesn't rely on solar. The cover just reduces the draw on the battery, which gives us the long life for the product. The cover comes off on the range. A lot of the time people will close the battery cover in between stages on a match just to stop dirt and material. And if it's a rainy event, anything going inside the lens. But generally speaking, when you finish shooting, the cover goes on, it goes in your range bag. Two years minimum on average for the battery. One of the other things Robbie asked me to talk about today was the correct method of inserting the battery. Um, it's very, very specific and it should be probably one of the most important things when mounting your optic. Inside, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we have two sets of battery terminals. Um, you have the main 
positive face and also a negative face inside there. What we recommend is that when you are inserting the battery, you angle the battery down to cover the terminals, then press down. What that does, it seats the battery properly. It also then protects the terminals from being crushed under pressure. What we have then, you can double check that the dot is on, you can see in the window, and from that point in, we provide various different mounting screws, shim plates, washers, and the mini dial and the Allen keys in order to then mount the product. Why, why is that plate important? So what the plate is actually nothing to do with our footprint. This is actually a one degree shim. So some manufacturers, when they either make a direct slide cut or produce a plate, make it flat. What this does is it enables the rear of the site to be lifted by one degree. So if you feel that to get your perfect zero and your perfect site picture, you need some more elevation. This is the item that you can place between the slide or the plate and the optic. This will give you one degree of elevation, enable you to adjust the elevation screws and get that perfect sight picture and the perfect zero for the product. But normally you don't need to use it if the sights just Absolutely. mount. Absolutely. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, this product will just stay inside there and never need it. But sometimes we speak to customers and they say, I can't achieve a perfect zero. We introduce them to the plate, that puts them where they need to be and the zero then becomes perfect. Do you need to use those uh, buffers? So buffers? the clear nylon washers, some people use them because they think they need to protect the surface of the red dot itself when they mount the screws. This is actually a shim or a washer that you can use with the two different choices of screw length to achieve the perfect installation. So if you find the screws are too long for your particular red dot installation or firearm, this acts as a washer which can take away the space on the screw lengths. Okay. It's not a necessary product, but it all depends which firearm you're using, which installation. Generally speaking, um, this came around for the Hellcats and the, the really small EDC products that have a very short screw length requirement. Well, we provide an eight and a 10 mil M4 screw in the retail packaging, but these are generally not needed for the regular installations. So as you can, can as you told, how does it work? How do, does it, when it gets brighter, does it shut down a little bit or yep. power on a little bit? So the key features that we feel are important for our products are the fact that it's always on. There is a light sensing emitter in the red dot. It's an open emitter product, but what this does is it samples the environment where you are shooting and it automatically adjusts the brightness of the dot. If you're in a low light environment, it reduces the dot down if you're outside in bright sunshine, it senses that you need more power and it will automatically adjust the product. It will push the brightness up and enable you to still see the dot in pure, brilliant sunshine. Um, we used this recently at the European Handgun Championships in Greece. Everywhere from in the morning when you are shooting into the sun over a bright berm, the dot changed its brightness to account for that. And then late afternoon when you're in the low dusk sunshine, it reduces the brightness and keeps you in, you know, with the dot in the window at all times to be able to see it. So after you, let's say, after you, th that's why there are no buttons on, the, no. you just mount it on and zero it into it works. Yeah, so the reason we have no buttons is part of our mindset and our methodology is that for us, we wanted to make the best optic we could have that would sit as low over the barrel axis as possible. So that gives you an incredibly low presentation for the red dot, but it also means it becomes incredibly accurate because it's as low over the bore axis as possible. Ideally, the lowest possible way to mount the red dot is into a cut slide or a frame. We, but if that's not always possible or you have a product that isn't cut for our footprint, we provide multiple mounting plate options for every brand and every pistol on the market commonly available today. And what is that piece? So this is uh, our mini dial. So what this actually incorporates is the ability to actually lock it down inside the Allen key. I'm not sure if you can see that. But what that then does is it provides you, once the red dot is mounted on the firearm, you actually adjust the elevation and the windage using the mini dial. Um, and it enables you to use the increments on the dial to adjust 
to get that perfect zero and it has the increments that allow you to turn it. Um, we don't have any click adjustment, we have infinite adjustment. So we prefer that method because it allows you to get the perfect zero. You don't have to choose between a very small click adjustment between one point and the next. We have no physical click. What it has is infinite adjustment which allows you to get that perfect adjustment for your red dot. Okay. One more thing. If I'm changing the battery, do I need to zero the gun again? So, interesting point. So what we have on our footprint is essentially six points of contact. So if your slide is cut for the shield footprint, you will see that there are four recoil lugs that the red dot locates into. If you're also using one of our plate systems, we provide the same footprint with the four recoil lugs included. Those four lugs combined with the two screws to actually hold the site down mean that the red dot itself can only go back into one place. Um, we have never found the need to re-zero the product after changing the battery, provided you use the same torque spec which we advise for the product. If you're using an M3 screw, we provide uh, we advise 0.8 Newton meters for the M3s. For the M4s that we supply in the packaging, it's 2.0 Newton meters. But the most important key aspect to all of this when mounting a red dot is the use of Loctite. Everybody talks these down to within an inch of their lives and potentially risks stripping the threads out of the plates. You will be surprised how much torque you can generate with the human arm. Um, the lock is provided by Loctite 248, which is the lipstick version of the product. It's the blue one, right? The blue Loctite, yeah, for sure. Um, readily available everywhere, but that's what we recommend when we mount the red dots. Use the correct torque settings, the correct screws, and the correct Loctite. It will also then enable you to remove the product for general maintenance and cleaning. And if you have to then replace back, clean out the threads on the screws to remove any of the Loctite. Ideally, replace the screws if you can but then you can change the battery, continue the maintenance that you wanted to do, remount the dot, and it will go back into the zero. One more question I would like to ask you about this shape of the window. Uh, why is it angled? Why, why, why? Because I like it, because it's big, it's br bright, you can see that you can find it so easy dot comparing to other uh, manufacturers, for me it's perfect. But I like the angles also, what does it do? So when we designed the product initially, we had the choice of increasing the window size proportionately. So compared to our original products, this is 80% bigger window space. But we decided that for the competitive shooting market, we didn't need to grow the window vertically. So instead of making it round like other manufacturers have, we decided to increase the width of the window. So for competitive IPSC or IDPA or USPSA shooting, we found that you didn't need to maintain the dot in the window during recoil. So the ability to keep the dot visible during upwards and downwards movement wasn't as key as it was to the lateral movement. So when you came into position or out of position, it enabled you to get on the dot and shoot earlier. So we found that in our testing with our team members, the preference was to have a wider but not necessarily taller window because we felt that the extra height we could introduce but chose not to wasn't as beneficial as having a wider window which meant that you could come into position or out of position and still stay on the dot earlier. Okay. And the lens is glass or plastic? Yeah, so the first generation of this product we made a poly lens. Um, we decided very soon that it wasn't the best choice of material to use for what we wanted. So we moved immediately onto the glass version. That enabled everybody to do what everybody normally does on a range and take your t-shirt and clean it with a finger. Rather than use any special cleaning products or tools, we decided that this product in a glass format was as simple to clean and maintain as it would be to wear a, a spectacle lens or a sunglass lens. So all of the kit we had in our bags already to clean our glasses or spectacles or range kit you could use this straight onto the lens itself. It has our coatings on the inside to give that um, filter that we provide because with a red dot product, the color filter that we use um, enhances the dot itself. But for cleaning and ease of use and maintenance, we moved to glass as soon as we could. Perfect. I use it for quite a while. I have 50,000 rounds on my, my uh, slides mounted and works.
perfectly. I really well, like it. We hope so, because the input that we had for the product was from people like Robbie. All of the professional IPSC, IDPA, USPSA shooters who had an input on the product felt that this was the best way for us to do a product. Um, we tried to capture a competitive market. This is solely aimed for that. There are many uses for the product, um, but we have now also, as a release this year at IWA, provided this now with a 65 ring MOA uh, dot and ring for IPSC shotgun um, and other intended uses. So we've taken a tried and tested product, which we are now, it's difficult to see from obviously the blue gun, but inside here we have a 65 two MOA ring and dot which is proprietary aimed for IPSC shotgun or all sorts of other um, game or hunting purposes. But again, we've used the same technology, the same ideas, but changed the reticle to give you the 65 to MOA version. Looks very really nice. Yeah, all Looks the same really benefits. Nice. Everything is the same, just a dot and ring version. New for IWA 2024. Thank you, Justin, for your time. Thank for you, Robbie. Uh, we'll See you on the range. Thank you for support and everything. Yeah. See you guys. If you like our content, please like video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions, shoot us an email at support at caesar-shop.com.